Last week in a surprising report by The Blast, we learned that Slipknot percussionist Chris Fenn intended to file a suit against two of his bandmates, Corey Taylor and Sean Clown Crayon, and we learned that this had something to do with some sort of a financial dispute. The Blast didn't cite any specific source for this information, and there were a lot of people speculating that this might have been some sort of a promotional tactic for the band or some sort of of a conspiracy theory. There were a lot of people speculating that this might not be true at all. We searched extensively to find some sort of evidence that this had been filed to begin with, uh, but we now know for certain that this Uh, lawsuit has been filed. It has been filed with the New York County Clerk's Office, and we now have the official documentation of that suit. We're going to go through the specific allegations being made here in the suit. And again, these are allegations, but Christopher Fenn, as you can see here on the uh, front page of this document, is filing suit against his bandmates in Slipknot, Corey Taylor and Clown. Uh, You'll recall that Slipknot announced that Chris Fenn was no longer a member of the band in lieu of this lawsuit, but they didn't go into any further details. And so far, they haven't uh, responded to any of the claims made in this lawsuit that we now know is is much more than just a legal threat and is actually something that appears to be or, or will be making its way through the courts or through some sort of arbitration process. So anything that I'm going to go over in this video here, this is pure opinion. I'm just going to try to go through this and make sense of it as we likely all are. So let's jump into it. All right, so here we go. As you can see on the first page, it's filed in the Supreme Court of the state of New York and uh, Christopher Fenn right there, pretty surprising to see against Slipknot Incorporated, Not Merch LLC, SK Productions LLC, SK Touring, Not Touring LLC, Rob Short and Associates, uh, Clown and Corey Taylor and Robert Shore. Uh, Just to point one thing out, we've gone through this document already. You're going to see something that says RSA a lot in the documents. They're referring to uh, this gentleman, Rob Shore and Associates. Rob Shore apparently is some sort of a business manager for the band. So that's what they're referring to there. So we're going to move on. We're going to skip some of the stuff you don't need to see, but they have uh, 20 or 30 days to respond to this suit and uh, file their own response. So uh, you've got some of the the basic setup stuff here uh, for the suit. And we're gonna go into their key facts section where they they break it down. Plaintiff uh, Fenn at all times relevant to this action was a member of the heavy metal band Slipknot. Slipknot was originally founded in Des Moines, Iowa in 1995. Crayon asked Fenn to join Slipknot in 1998. He agreed. Fenn was a member or has been a member of Slipknot continuously from 1998 to the present. Crane is a member of Slipknot. Taylor is a member of Slipknot. Slipknot has recorded and released five studio albums since 98. Fenn has composed works of Slipknot. Fenn has performed on all Slipknot albums since 1998. Fenn has received credit for all of his performances on Slipknot albums. Fenn is a co-author of all performing artworks of Slipknot. The business of Slipknot was originally operated as a general partnership under Iowa law. Uh, Slipknot began as an association of two or more persons to carry on as co-owners of a business for profit to with the band Slipknot for an indefinite period of time. Finn became a general partner of the uh, Slipknot general partnership in 1998. Other general partners included Crane and Taylor who were considered the leaders of the band Slipknot. The Slipknot General Partnership was partnership at will. Fenn reposed trust and confidence in the fidelity and integrity of Crayon and Taylor to operate Slipknot General Partnership for the mutual benefit of the partners, including Fenn. So they're saying that basically Crayon and Taylor were making the business decisions um, on a day-to-day status to benefit all the other guys um, in the band. And it makes it sound like they may not have been that involved comparatively. Uh, Fenn's relationship with Crane and Taylor went beyond that of a conventional business relationship because it was long term, uh, was not negotiated at arm's length and became Fenn or sorry. And because Fenn 
trusted Crane and Taylor to operate Slipknot General Partnership for the mutual benefit of the partners, including Fenn. Fenn received a share of the profits for the business of the Slipknot General Partnership, including share of the profits from merchandising and touring. Fenn's share of the profits were separate and distinct from any payment uh, to him for services as an independent contractor or of wages or other compensation as an employee. The federally registered tra- uh, trademarks of Slipknot, um, aka the Slipknot marks, you'll see the word marks um, used a lot down below, um, are issued and outstanding. Um, so we'll go through, we'll, we're just going to skip a little bit of this here. Um, the Slipknot marks represented the goods and services of the general partnership. Um, let's continue. All right, so they talk about some of these companies that were dissolved and some of them that were formed after Fenn joined in 1998. And it, it, it appears that they're saying here that Fenn was unaware of their existence. Um, so um, Slipknot... CA was not formed until August 29th, 2003, when its Articles of Incorporation were filed with the uh, California Secretary of State. It was not in existence when the Slipknot marks were applied for and issued. None of the Slipknot marks are subject to any assignment of record. Fenn never agreed to the assignment of Slipknot marks to Slipknot CA or their ownership by Slipknot CA. So what they're saying here is that Fenn apparently never agreed or was told about this company being set up. He was never made aware of it. The Iowa LLC Slipknot Merchandising was formed on August 8, 2000, maintained an active uh, entity until it was administratively dissolved on August 9, 2013. The Iowa Limited Liability Company Slipknot Touring LLC was formed on August 8, 2000 and was active until December 9, 2016. Uh, when Eric Breiner, an employee of RSA, um, again, again, it's um, Rob, let me scroll up, Robert Shore, Rob Shore and Associates, he filed a statement of termination, SK Productions was formed in 97, Slipknot NY was formed on May 10th, 2006, SK Touring was formed in December, or in Delaware on May 12th, 2011, not Touring was formed in Delaware on March 27, 2014. Not Merch was formed in Delaware on March 27, 2014. Now, Fenn, to the best of his information, knowledge, and belief, is not now and has never been an owner, shareholder, member, manager, officer, director, held any interest in or had any knowledge of the business of assets of or operations of Slipknot Merchandising LLC of Iowa, Slipknot Touring LLC of Iowa, SK Productions, Slipknot NY, SK Touring, Not Touring, Not Merch, Slipknot NY, or Slipknot CA. That is a lot of business to be going on to say that you don't have any knowledge of that. Now, not saying that he's making that up, not saying that the guys in Slipknot were doing anything bad, just pointing it out there. If all that was happening behind his back, that's not, that's not good. Uh, there's, there's certainly a communication breakdown there. If all of those businesses are being opened up without his knowledge, continuing on, it says at all relevant times, RSA by and through shore has been the business manager of Fenn Slipknot and Slipknot's members as business ma- uh, manager of Fenn Slipknot and Slipknot's members, including Crayon and Taylor RSA and shore provide advice and counsel simultaneously to Fenn Crayon and Taylor the members of Slipknot, Fenn repose, trust, and confidence uh, in the fidelity and integrity of RSA Insure. Fenn's relationship with RSA Insure went beyond that of conventional uh, conventional relationship. Uh, same in- info there. All right, count one, breach of fidu- uh, fiduciary duty against Crane and Taylor. The Slipknot General Partnership formed in Iowa is subject to the provisions of the Iowa Uniform General Partnership Act um, at all relevant times, Fenn, Crane, and Taylor have been members of the Slipknot General Partnership. Crane and Taylor own, uh, owed fiduciary duties to their partner, Fenn, in connection with the operation of the partnership, the division of the partnership profits, and the management of the partnership assets. Crane, uh, Crane and Taylor breached their fiduciary duties to Fenn by, among other things, applying for and maintaining the Slipknot marks on behalf of Slipknot CA, 
um, creating, operating, and owning interests in Slipknot Merchandising, Slipknot Touring, SK Productions, all these different companies, all of which utilized and exploited the assets and goodwill of the Slipknot General Partnership and which benefited from the talent and efforts of Slipknot General Partners without compensating the partnership, enriching themselves out of proportion to the efforts and undivided interests of the other general partners, including those of Fenn, failing to provide information on the operation of partnership consistent with the duties owed between partners, violating the general standards of conduct owed between partners, and committing such other further breaches as may be determined in discovery and proven at trial, which means that um, there there could be things like, um, uh, you know, in, in a discovery, there are going to be a lot of financial documents that are mandated that the, that are turned over by the court. Um, there could be depositions involved. Oftentimes, those depositions are taped, where there are a myriad of different questions. Um, mainly, this could get very ugly on both sides there. So, uh, this is an unfortunate situation. Um, and then it says the actions of Crane and Taylor of Damage Fen and the Slipknot partnership. Uh, you could probably add to that. Fenn is going to argue that he was removed from the partnership unlawfully, given that he is asserting that he has an equal partnership in the company. Fenn is entitled to an accounting of the business of Slipknot Partnership from its inception through and including the present. Fenn is entitled to uh, imposition of constructive trust on the Slipknot marks for the benefit of himself and the Slipknot Partnership. Uh, so... Against Crayon, SK Productions, Slipknot NY, SK Touring, um, the plaintiff incorporates the allegations of uh, Partnership 1 through 58 of this complaint uh, fully set wherein Crayon requests Fenn to perform services for Crayon and the Slipknot General Partnership and its successors in interest, including but not limited to Slipknot Merchandising of Iowa and so on and so forth. Crayon individually or by or through his agent, RSA repeated his request verbally to uh, Fenn to perform services for Crane from 1998 uh, to present at intervals of less than one year, including in connection with each and every Slipknot album, um, etc. Fenn provided services to Crane and the Slipknot. It's just basically saying that he worked for these companies but didn't get compensated is essentially what he's claiming here. And they're just getting really down into the meat and potatoes of it um so count to unjust enrichment against crayon sk productions and so on and so forth <coughs> sorry um crayon requested fen to provide services for crayon and slipknot general partnership again more services he wasn't paid for he, that he's alleging he wasn't paid for uh, we we don't know what the heck is going on uh, and then against rsa he's saying that you know, they had a business relationship with RSA and he's alleging that uh, they were supposed to look out for everyone's best interests and they reportedly weren't. So this was filed on March 13th. We're just now seeing it. And uh, there is a lot in here, but one of the, the main things, and it's, it's written in very cleverly, but he, he writes in here that it's for the benefit of the Slipknot general partnership, which essentially means also other members within the band. So they're making a case that it seems like since, you know, Joey has left the band and other, you know, that basically it has become the Corey and Clown show and they are making the business completely about them. That's his claim, um, you know, and the guys in Slipknot, uh, have denied that claim through their statement that we went over uh, a few days ago. And so what is interesting here is that we we have Finn not responding publicly and it's pretty much all in here in, in this document. What he thinks about this situation is pretty clear here and we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out, but they've got 30 days from the service of this uh, lawsuit to have um, some sort of response filed in court. And we're going to keep an eye on that situation. But to have this many companies own, opened up and 
to claim you don't know anything about it or to not know anything about it. If that is true, that's not a good situation. That's not a good way to do business, to be opening all of these different companies and not informing those in your band about it or even giving them any accounting on it. Uh, that That is a difficult situation. But again, we're going to have to see how this plays out in court. Like they said, what, what evidence can come out in discovery, what evidence could come out through depositions and so on and so forth. So sorry, that's a lot, um, a lot to digest. We do know this is not a hoax. Um, this isn't some sort of promotional tactic. This is the real deal and we're going to keep you posted. So thanks so much for joining us and be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on breaking hard rock and heavy metal news. Thanks for joining us today here at Rock Feed and we'll see you all very soon.